Hello and welcome to Dawn Chorus Writes, a miraculous ladybug fan fiction and audio fiction. This is a new one for Sheikah's Wednesday. So it's written by Sheikah, narrated by Dawn, myself, hello. And it is called The Perfect Birthday. A massive shout out to the artist um, providing in the thumbnail called Maku. It's absolutely stunning stunning artwork so all her information is down in the description below go and send her some love send me some love by smashing that like button comment down below what you think of it and what will happen in next in chapter two and subscribe so you don't miss out on this series or future ones to come or little one shots so i hope you enjoy chapter one the best day ever and her eyes are blue. For the first time in her life, Marinette Dupan Chang was up two hours before her alarm was due to go off. Today was a very important day, a day she had been planning for the last year. Today was Adrian Agreste's birthday. Adrian, the love of her life, had never had a birthday party, and that abortive attempt of an accumulatized Nino didn't really count. She was going to be the one to give it to him. She had everything ready. She had baked and decorated the cake last night. The girl squad was on board to help decorate the park across from the school. Nino had volunteered to DJ and the guys in the class were bringing snacks and drinks. Her parents were going to deliver the cake to the park after school. That left her with only two jobs clear things with Adrian's bodyguard and get him there in time for the party. Oh, why did I agree to do this? She groaned, looking at the two small envelopes that sat atop the wrapped present in her vanity. I can barely say complete sentences around Adrian. Tiki, how am I supposed to go with him on a scavenger hunt to end up there in time for the party? You agreed because you want to spend time with him alone on his birthday, Marinette? Her Kwame replied matter-of-factly. And the scavenger hunt was your idea? I know, Tiki, she wailed. But surely it would have been better for Nino or Alia to have done this bit. Come on, Marinette. Stop being a scaredy bug and do this for Adrian. Right. This was for Adrian, the boy that she'd been in love with since the second time they had met. She was going to make this the best day ever for him, or die trying. Still, a little bit of luck never hurt. She kissed the back of the white envelope, leaving a mark with a pale pink lipstick. Tiki, I think I'll deliver this first clue in style, she said, sharing a knowing smile with her Kwame. A tiny friend giggled. Okay, just this once. Tiki, spots on. As she threw herself off her balcony and swung her way towards the aggress mansion in the rosy dawn, she felt the confidence that being Ladybug always gave her. She could do this. She would conquer her nerves and give the boy she loved the best birthday ever. Maybe she would see everything she'd done for him and realise she was more than just a friend. Maybe, maybe her love would be returned. This could be the best day ever. Assuming she could actually talk to him. Adrian woke to the sound of his bedroom window opening. Even though he had come awake instantly, he lay still to see who had broken into his room. The last year of being Cat Noir had sharpened his senses, even without being transformed, and even though he lay tense for action underneath his comforter, he kept his breathing slow and steady, with his eyes barely cracked open to see what was going on. He caught a flash of red and black as a mysterious figure passed in front of his piano towards his desk. He knew her. How could he not know his crime-fighting partner for the last year and, coincidentally, the girl he loved? While he had dreams like this of Ladybug visiting him in his room at night 
and had dismissed them as adolescent hormones running amok, he never really entertained the idea of her coming to see him. Him as Adrian. His heart pounded in his chest with a sick, giddy feeling. Does this mean she has figured out my secret identity? Have I given her any suggestions that quiet Adrian Agress, model, fencer, student and teen idol was really her outrageous, flirty, extroverted partner Cat Noir? Ladybug stood over his desk for a moment, then set something down and started creeping towards the window again. On her way, he saw her pause and turned towards where he lay. His heart was pounding so loudly he was sure she could hear it. She took a few steps and stood at the foot of his bed. He closed his eyes and pretended to be asleep. She stood there silent for a long time, and just when he thought he must have dreamt her, he heard a sudden intake of breath and felt the lightest of kisses on his forehead. Happy birthday, Adrian, she whispered and stepped away. He couldn't just let her go. Not after that butterfly kiss and those soft, wistful words. Bolting upright in bed, he stared at her wide-eyed, looking at her fully in the light of the sunrise, painting his room in pink and amber. Ladybug? The first real sunbeams of the day bathed her in liquid gold as she turned back to him. He couldn't see her fully, but her dark pigtails were outlined in brilliance. The ray of light caressed her ears, cheek and neck before sliding down her arm and made his breath catch in his throat at how beautiful she was. His lady was there, as radiant as a dream and in this moment just as fleeting. Enjoy your special day, she said, just loud enough for him to hear. Then he blinked and the vision was gone. He scrambled out of bed to his desk and found a small white envelope with his name written in a pretty script on the front. Turning it over, he blushed as he saw the kiss mark on the flap. She had sealed it with a kiss. Ladybug had bought him a birthday card and sealed it with a kiss. Retrieving a letter opener from the drawer on his desk, he carefully slit open the envelope and took out the green and pink card inside, in the same pretty script as his name was written. Happy birthday. Today, brand new, a friend has planned a treat for you. So follow the clues with a pair of keen eyes and be prepared for a big surprise. Ladybug had planned a treat for his birthday, as Adrian... He had only met her a few times and there was no way she could know he was Cat Noir. So why would she go to the trouble to plan a birthday surprise for him? Oh, but who cares about rational thoughts when the love of your life has just given you a birthday kiss and a clue leading to a surprise? One thing was sure, Adrian couldn't wait to get to school today. He had a feeling this was going to be the best birthday ever. Despite all the last minute preparation she had to set up, Marinette got to school early that morning. She, Alia and Nino were camped out on the courtyard steps comparing battle plans. Okay, so the clue cards are planted around the city, along with my little gifts. Everyone knows the party is a surprise, so no one should spill the news to Adrian before it's time, Marinette said conspiracously. Nino, when Adrian's car pulls up, I need you and Alia to distract him while I talk to his bodyguard. Did you bring Gorilla Bait? Nino asked, because I don't think that guy will let my dude go on a scavenger hunt all over the city without some serious buttering up. Marinette patted her backpack with a knowing look. Don't worry about me. You just make sure that Adrian doesn't see me talking to him. I'll take care of the rest. A piercing whistle came from the edge of the road. All three looked up to see Alex waving and pointing to the silver luxury car, getting ready to pull towards the school. Scatter! 
Alia said, pushing Nino down the stairs ahead of her and giving Marinette a wink on the way by. You got this, girl! Marinette scurried down towards the stairs and circled around so that hopefully Adrian wouldn't see her. The car pulled up and Alia and Nino started talking to Adrian as soon as he got out of the car. Nino was giving him one of his trademarked one-arm hugs. She could hear him wishing their friend a happy birthday and then a grunt as Alia stepped on his foot to keep him from saying too much that would let the surprise out before it was time. She shook her head. She knew it would take both of them. She slipped around the car and tapped on the driver's side window as the trio on the other side started walking up towards the steps. The tinted window slid down and the stern, solid face of Adrian's bodyguard looked out at her. She took a deep breath to steady herself. Hi, Adrian's bodyguard, sir, she began. I know today is Adrian's birthday and with everything that's been going on in the last year, with the Akumas and all, I just wanted to thank you for keeping our friends safe. So here is a little something for you as a thank you. She pulled a cream and gold box out of a backpack and held it out to him. The stone-faced man looked at her with surprise. He reached out a massive hand and took the box from her. Opening it, Marinette saw he smiled at the assortment of cookies and pastries she had specially prepared for this moment. He looked up at her with a glitter in his eyes, his expression one of softness and gratitude for the attention. I know it's kind of late notice for you, but we have a planned surprise party for him at the park after school with a sort of scavenger hunt in between to keep him busy while it gets set up. Would would you be willing to help us with it? I know he has nothing planned for the day, please? Marinette had seen Adrian's bodyguard look angry, stern and stoic, but she had never seen this particular expression on his face before. Not only was it soft, but a happy, wistful smile played around his mouth and eyes. She realised in that moment that this tough, imposing, silent man loved Adrian like a son, and probably more than Adrian ever knew. Setting the box of goodies down on the seat beside him, he offered his hand through the window and nodded once. She took it with a smile. Thank you, sir. I'm hoping this will be the best birthday Adrian has ever had. Ever so gently, the massive hand reached over and patted her on the head. Can you make sure Adrian gets this after school? She handed him a white envelope. It has the clue to the first location in it. He nodded again, rolled up the window, and drove off. Marinette sighed in relief. Now, all she had to do was get through school, and then she would have some time alone with Adrian before his surprise party. Adrian chatted idly with Nino and Alia on the way up the steps, but he really had no idea what about, as his heart and mind were still on the dawn visit from Ladybug. He carried the envelope in his pocket even now, along with Marinette's lucky charm, as a talisman for the day ahead. It might just have been his imagination, but it seemed to feel warm there. Plague had teased him about it mercilessly, but he had just let it roll off his shoulders. How could he not, with Ladybug's kiss of luck on his forehead? As they reached the top of the steps, he came out of his reverie for a moment and looked around. Hey, where's Marinette? Oh, you know my girl, Alia said, rolling her eyes. Always running late. He turned and glimpsed Marinette, talking to his bodyguard for an instant before the car drove away. He had seen them shake hands. What was all that about? He watched her climb the steps behind them, almost skipping with the sweetest smile he had ever seen on her face. She looked really nice today. She wasn't wearing her normal school clothes. Instead, she was wearing a red dress with a black crop jacket. Her little pink purse was still the same, but her hair ties looked different. Red ribbons that trailed out behind her pigtails and floated in the light breeze. 
For just a second, as he watched those ribbons, he thought he was looking at Ladybug again. But no, that wasn't possible. He had seen Marinette and Ladybug together at least once. Even if it would make sense, he thought. She is a everyday Ladybug, after all. Hey, Marinette, he called with a smile. That was when he realised he had made a mistake. She jumped at the sound of his voice, startled and tripped over the trailing straps of a backpack that she was carrying in front of her. Seeing she was heading for a nasty fall, Adrian let down the ten steps between them and caught her. Her slight frame landed lightly in his arms, cushioned by a backpack, but the impact threw him off balance and they both went down on the steps with Marinette on top of him. They lay there breathless for a second. They were nose to nose their arms wrapped around each other in a way that could only be described as intimate to an outsider, even if a pink backpack was between them. He stared for a moment into her eyes, and she stared into his. Oh, how did I never notice? Her eyes were so blue before. He wondered. His eyes widened and he felt a sudden feeling of deja vu. As if he knew her eyes and the feel of her arms around him from somewhere else. Marinette blinked, flushed and rolled off him, stammering apologies. Oh, Adrian, I'm sorry, are you hurt? It was just, you called and it startled me and... He smiled and stood, holding out a hand to help her up. No, I'm not hurt. My bag cushioned my back. Are you okay? Yeah, I am fine. Your fall broke my chest. I mean, your chest broke my fall. (laughs) I'm glad, he said. I would hate for one of my best friends to get hurt on my birthday. Oh, that's right, she said. Happy birthday. Yeah, (laughs) thanks, he said. After knowing she was okay, Adrian was just so happy. It was his birthday, his friends were there and safe, and Ladybug had set up a surprise for him. He just had to share it with someone. Seeing that Alia and Nino had already left for class, he leaned in and whispered to Marinette, And guess what? What? she asked, her eyes widened at his conspiratorial tone. Ladybug has planned a birthday surprise just for me, he said, keeping his voice low partly so that no one else could hear him, but also so that his voice didn't betray him by spiking up higher than a dog's whistle. That would not be cool, he thought sheepishly, especially in front of Marinette. For just a moment, he thought he saw a look of pained surprise across her face before it was replaced with a wide smile. He wasn't sure, but the smile looked forced, and it definitely didn't reach her eyes. <laughs> That's great! <laughs> Imagine one of the heroes of Paris planning a birthday surprise for you, she said, her voice sounding strangely tight. That's amazing, Adrian. See you in class, okay? And with that, she took off up the stairs with what sounded like a sniff. Thank you for listening to chapter one of The Perfect Birthday. I hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below what you think of it, what will happen next. And make sure you smash that like button and subscribe while you're there just press all the buttons and i will speak to you soon bye